Hello, can I have your attention? I'm Garland Scott, I'm the pastor of Embassy Fellowship here. I just want to give a brief comment. Um, I wanted the sheriff and the mayor to come here and have this press conference, simply because I've been in this neighborhood since 1993. I'm known in the city as the pastor of the hood. I've seen everything that's been happening outside around the corner and I've been quiet until everything comes to a head. I'm trusted that uh, the sheriff and the mayor will bring a resolve to this, but most of all, I'm the peacemaker. And I think that we can do this peacefully in everything that we do. So I want to present to you our mayor, Mayor Curry. Oh, let me pray first, I'm sorry. Let me pray first. Bow your heads with me, please, if you can. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come. We ask you to bring peace in this place and help people to have an ear to hear today. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Garland, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, when the sheriff called today in conjunction with faith leaders and invited me to this press conference, uh, it was an obvious yes. Uh, I am here today first and foremost as a citizen of Jacksonville, uh, as someone that lives in the neighborhood and is raising a family. Uh, but I'm also here as your mayor, and that is a mayor that cares about every neighborhood. Uh, and when people and citizens have questions and concerns and there are things that are on their heart, they're on my heart as well. Um, so, again, I'm grateful to have been included in this, Sheriff, uh, and uh, now I'll turn it over to Sheriff Mike Williams. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank, um, again, Pastor Scott for opening the doors of this church to allow us to come here today to, to have this conversation. I want to thank the mayor, obviously, for being here and, and, uh, and everyone you see behind me who was called on very short notice. Uh, and made adjustments to their schedule to be here because they feel like that the topic is so important and I would agree and uh, it's important for us again to have this conversation. Listen, recently uh, I had our office release a video of an officer uh, beating an arrestee. I found that action to be egregious and criminal and I acted on it. He was arrested and he was fired. I have an internal investigation ongoing now to look at any other JSO personnel who may have been there and witnessed it to see if their actions were in accordance with policy and good conduct. This past Sunday, a man in a stolen car evaded police and ultimately crashed into an officer pursuing him in an effort to arrest him. The subject was shot by the officer, one time, in the head while facing the officer, according to the medical examiner's report, and relayed to the public during a news conference. This is an active criminal investigation as well. And I am following the letter of the law as always as we always do with respect to investigations. And that's what leading is, doing what is right and doing what is required of us. There are some things that we can't share until investigations are complete. And this wouldn't change if another agency was doing these investigations, which they are not. No one can speak to the specifics of an investigation until it is concluded. This week, a 2014 video from our jail booking area was released by the public defender. It depicted a juvenile it showed his encounter with the corrections officer. Again, and what I can tell you is that corrections officer was suspended uh, in 2015 without pay for five days as, as a result of that investigation. And he currently no longer works for us. He resigned in 2015 while under investigation on another matter. We are currently litigating this civilly, which prohibit, prohibits me from commenting any further about that case. So ladies and gentlemen, do we make mistakes? Yes, we do. But the question is, will I violate the law in an effort to rush to judgment just to quell speculation and rumors? I can't and I won't. I took an oath to uphold the law and to follow it. The question that has to be asked is are we working to hold our officers accountable for their actions? And the answer to that is yes. I can't violate the law because someone who hasn't even gone to the scene goes on television and speaks untruths to stir up even more rumor and conjecture. Our community deserves the truth and nothing but the truth. In the desire to be transparent, I come to the public not only when adverse things happen, but constantly. And if not me, our people. We're working every day to foster and strengthen relationships with citizens in every part of this city. That's why when we discuss standing together today, we move quickly. And we stand together today to promote peaceful dialogue in our community, to address our challenges together. Those of you who want to incite discontent in this community, We'll do that whether a mayor or a sheriff or a pastor ask you to stop. But I trust the judgment of a wise citizen to know the difference between civil discourse that leads to real change 
and pure gossip that divides us. Jacksonville is already on the national stage because Jacksonville is at a crossroads. The violence we've been working hard to reduce, the young lives that these civic and religious leaders you see standing behind me are working to improve, that work is a crusade and we will not stop in that. But Jacksonville is also on the national stage because never before in our history as a racially and economically and socially diverse community have we been so united in our dedication to fixing our problems and doing it together. I'm grateful to the leaders who have asked me to continue this open dialogue. We're going to do this constantly, and we're going to discuss anything and everything that needs to be discussed, working through the challenges of the past and the present. And I'm committed to do this, and I want to thank all of you for partnering with me in that. I know that trust begins with having a law enforcement agency that can, we can all have faith in and be proud of. That's how trust is built, and that's how transparency is fostered. But when things go wrong, and they will, I am your elected law enforcement leader and I will do my job and correct those mistakes and make sure the letter of the law is followed and the people are held accountable. At JSO, we are working hard to recruit men and women of character who through their training and supervision and through the support of the mayor and the council are provided the tools they need to uphold their sworn duty and carry out the charge to solve and prevent crime in our community. There's an old saying, be the change you want to see in that community. And I would ask those of you that want to see change to join us and become engaged in, with your sheriff's office as we partner with our community. I want to thank all of you for being here today. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming today on such short no notice. And again, uh, my commitment is there to partner with you and to continue to work through the challenges of our community. So thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to uh, Pastor Scott for a closing prayer. Pastor. Well, Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for all we heard. We ask you right now to hover this city with peace. Give the sheriff wisdom. Give the mayor wisdom. Give the pastors unity and working together, Father. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 